What is going on everyone? We're coming back at you with another Project Quorum video about a week ahead of its release. Now, many of you may know Level Up Larry. He's a big member of the EverQuest community, P99 community. Um, I believe he's the guild leader of Legacy of Ick on P99. Um, but he does a lot of the hardcore EverQuest stuff and a lot of good um, entertaining stuff over there, EverQuest related on his Twitch stream. He also has a YouTube channel. He did a Q&A with like the lead dev secrets spearheading Project Quorum. Um, this video is about two and a half hours long, so it's pretty extensive. Um, I implore you, if you want to see this entire video, we're going to link it down in the description. So you can go over there, give it a view, give it likes, show yourself some love, make some comments, show your love for Larry and for Secrets, and just, you know, all the hard work that they do and that they're putting out for this project to become a reality. With that being said, my goal of this is to condense that two and a half hour interview into hopefully something like 15, 20 minutes. I don't know, I'm really bad at that kind of thing, so... We'll see how well I do, but uh, we're going to definitely condense it a lot shorter than two and a half hours because I'm sure many of you are interested in the major takeaways from that Q&A. So with that being said, we're talking about Project Quorum, which is going to be a popped lock EverQuest server. It is on uh, piggybacking off of the Alcabor project, which is a current pop lock EverQuest server. It's been out for some quite some time. It's, you know, through its cycle. And um, this one is going to have a different rule set, but it's going to start out with the same client. I, th I believe they're going to update the uh, the client. They're hoping to get the updated client um, before Kunark launches. We're going to go over some of the differences between this server and the existing Alcabor server. Naturally, there's also, what is it, Agnar, is it? That's uh, part of the TLP uh, that's locked on pop, but... Obviously, that is much, much different because it has many quality of life uh, features that we are not interested in. Us who play P99 and everything else, maybe some of us play everything a little here and there, but there you go. We're going to discuss the differences between the servers and the questions that were asked in the Q&A, as well as we're going to be uh, piggybacking off of a video that I released about a week ago. Um, so we might you know, double dip a little bit. We might repeat some of the information that we had on that video a week ago, but we're definitely going to extend on all of that and uh, have updated information and confirmations and brand new information on the server. So with that being said, let's get into it. We're not going to necessarily go in any sort of order of information, just basically based on the questions asked in the interview itself. So Project Quorum is going to launch on October 1st, which is a Sunday. It's going to be launching at 3 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States, uh, which is noon Pacific Time in the United States. And you can just figure out which time which time that will be for your time zone using the Internet. So unlike the existing Alcabor project, this server is going to be one box. It's going to be like P99 in that sense, where they are going to monitor monitor your IP address and not allow you to log in multiple times. Now, there will be... Um, what do you call it, like uh, IP exemptions that they will, you know, allow. It's going to be a system where you're going to have to go into the Discord and ask for it. And, you know, they'll ask for some information like the accounts, so on and so forth. And look at that taken care of for you. There is going to be an earthquake system in this server as well, which is similar to the P99. P99 has an earthquake system where on P99, randomly, there will be an earthquake and an announcement server-wide that's basically respawning the raid targets. And uh, what this allows is for not the entire server or the biggest, sweatiest guilds to know exactly when a raid target is going to spawn. And then, you know, they'll be there waiting for it to spawn and they'll grab it. The difference between the Project Quorum earthquakes and the P99 earthquakes is that Project Quorum will have three different types of earthquakes and you will know which type it is in the announcement. So the different types, they're going to have three. So there's a 33% chance of which one it'll be. Um, before this, before I get ahead of myself, when it comes to raids, there is going to be a rotation between the guilds who are capable of downing the raid targets, or at least capable of giving a good attempt. So with that being said, having a rotation, if it's your turn for these raid targets, 
when the earthquake happens, there is a 33% chance that you're just going to get an additional raid kill. Now, one of the other, the second option, is that it's going to be first to engage. Um, so I'm sure everybody's familiar with this, but the first guild who gets there and who tags the raid target is the one with the ownership of that raid target. And the last one, the third one, is going to be a DPS race. So just get there and get going. And you know, if your guild doesn't have that much DPS, a bigger, sweatier guild, if you would, could show up a couple minutes late and they might be able to steal that target with sheer DPS. So, you know, those are the three uh, possibilities from the earthquake. I think this spices it up a bit and I think this is gonna be good. I think this is a good uh, alternative uh, to what we have seen on P99 or, you know, the old school way of, of EverQuest. On this server, they are introducing solo self-found and um, I think just solo and also hardcore modes. You would talk to the Priest of Discord, much like an original EverQuest, you would talk to the Priest of Discord to go PvP flagged. Uh, it would be the same way. Now, what we did learn in this question and answer is that you don't flag until you're level 10. Now, the reason behind this was explained that, uh, you know, many deaths happen uh, between levels 1 and 10. And uh, between levels 1 and 10, it could get really frustrating in Classic EverQuest. And uh, many things can go wrong. And, you know, sometimes you just want to, you know, maybe you made a Barbarian, but you don't want to start out in the Barbarian area. You want to play with your friends or whatever, say if you're just hardcore and you're not solo self-found. So you might want to meet your friend in... Freeport or something like this, right? So you're gonna make the run probably pretty early. You may die on their way there, so on and so forth. So what they decided to do is when you flag for these modes, you would flag at level 10. So this gets rid of a lot of the frustration. I mean, it's only, you know, before level 10, it's no big deal. And maybe this helps people hook up with each other so that they can group together and play and have some fun without the frustration. I think this is good. I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm not even sure I'm gonna partake in any of these modes. Then again, I partake in these modes on other games, so why would I not on this? Maybe one day, we'll see. But not at first. If you flag for hardcore, you're going, your death is permanent. So you flag for hardcore at level 10. Once you die, it was explained that your entire character is wiped. So all of your XP is wiped, reducing you back to level one. Um, all of your gears wiped, your money's wiped, your faction's wiped. So it doesn't seem like your character needs to be deleted. Your character is just simply going to be completely wiped back to as it was when it started. Also, deaths above level 30, currently, is going to make a server announcement. So if you are above the level of 30 and you do end up perishing, they're gonna announce it to the server. Um, you know, Secrets did say that many things are subject to change. 30 is the number that's um, going to be probably on launch. But again, this could be subject to change. Uh, if I, I don't imagine a lot of people are going to play hardcore EverQuest, to be honest. It's going to be very select few. So I don't think it's going to be any kind of spam or anything like that. But nonetheless, subject to change. As we've discussed before, the server is going to have nine month expansions with three month patches. So every nine months, an expansion will come out. And every three months, a patch will come out. So you're going to get three patches up into the next expansion. And then each expansion is going to have three patches and an expansion. And eventually, we're going to land on Planes of Power, which will also have its three patches before the game is finally complete, which is going to be around three years to get to the final destination. Um, it was flirted with that they are thinking of ways of maybe starting a fresh server you know after the server is complete kind of like p99 green was rumored to to do um they've flirted with that and ha having like a legacy server <clears throat> where you're where it'll last forever but then if people do want to move on and to start like a fresh new you know sort of time lock progression if you would then that option could be coming in the future we'll just have to wait and see if that's kind of your thing so the first patch of each expansion is going to also deal with legacy items. So we'll use Monostone, for example, it's a big one. And uh, I mean, there's plenty, right? Mask of the Deceiver, um, even originally J-Boots dropped off of, uh, what's her name in um, Najina, right? Drizzle something, I forgot, I forgot her name. Uh, but the, the one in Najina. <clears throat> anyway, so for the first three months, of classic, these items will drop as they did. Monostone will drop off of Evil Eye. 
And the way it's been explained is that this will only be within the first patch. So once three months goes by and we get into the second patch, they are no longer going to be dropped. So you do have this three month window. Now it was also explained on how they're going to deal with legacy items because legacy items are always a hot topic with every classic EverQuest server launch. Um, so what they're going to do to try to be fair and to try to have a just a good atmosphere and a good vibe to the server, keep everybody nice and all of that kind of stuff. The idea is that with these rare spawns, we'll use Monostone and Evil Eye for the example. Uh, Evil Eye will, you know, have like a 50% spawn rate. It's either him or the placeholder. And then when he does spawn, he's going to have a 50% chance to drop the legacy item. Now, this is going to go for all legacy items. So there's not going to be um, a difficulty getting it during the time frame. Now, this goes even further. In order to loot legacy items, you're going to need to be level 30 at least. And they are one per character. So you can't just hoard them. Now you will, obviously, you have three months, you could level a ton of level 30 alts, and you can go and go do the roundup and get all the different legacy items on that level 30 alt. But what this is doing is at least curbing uh, the ability of somebody just spending three months of their life just stockpiling these, poop socking these, so that nobody else can get these items. I think this is good. Um, you know, you can only, I mean, obviously people are going to power level with druids and whatnot. They're going to power level level 30s you know, really fast. It's going to happen. But this is definitely going to um, let your, allow your average player, uh, your casual player, your player that has a nine to five, it's going to allow them to get in there and to get their own if they choose to during this three month period. There shouldn't, um, there shouldn't, and there's only one per account, uh, I'm sorry, one per character. So this should really help with the economy surrounding these items. Uh, they shouldn't, you know, go for just crazy amounts of money short after. Of course, this is only a three month period. So once the server's three years old, say, and, and you know, pop is out and everything, of course, this is gonna be nearly three years ago when you were able to get Monostone. So people who started playing after the three month window, of course they would have to buy it if they wanted it. Now, if you got, if you looted a Monostone and you sold it, you can no longer have a Monostone. That Monostone is like linked to your character and you're only ever allowed to have that one. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, so you, you'd you probably want to keep those items. They're there to be kept. And, um, you know, let me know down in the comments how you feel about this. I think this is all good, uh, you know, because to be honest, and not everybody's going to agree here, so do let me know in the comments. But I, I'm not the type to go for legacy items. Do I want legacy items? Sure. Um, am I going to sit there and try to poop sock or try to wait in line or to use a third party program that just clicks or for some of these things for anything like that? I'm not I'm not the type. I'm not going to do it. Um, you know, I work a full time job, so on and so forth. 18 kids, you know, 36 jobs, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not the type. I'm trying to get on and have fun and all that kind of stuff. And maybe, you know, it's different than what classic EverQuest is. But that's fine. It's, it's a it's a fine change in my opinion. Not everybody's going to have that opinion. Let me know your opinion. I'm curious. But uh, what this will do is it'll allow me to get a Monostone for the first time in my life. <laughs> you know? So that'll be cool. Um, I wouldn't mind that. And uh, there is still that limit of they're only available for the first three months. So there is going to be a finite amount of them. Now there's going to be, you know, tons more than say on green, P99 green or something like that. Yeah, there's going to be a ton more. And yeah, there is going to be some dude who ends up with 50 of them or something like that. Probably. But I think this is a good middle ground, personally. Let me know. It was also spoken about certain things like bottlenecks. Now, Secrets is going to try to get rid of a lot of the bottlenecks that involve just waiting around. You know, it, it, it's not that... It's not that the devs want to remove... Uh, the difficulties of quests or how many different places, how many different things you need to collect, all these kind of things. But it's the things like um, when you need to loot something off of the ground and it only spawns every five hours and, you know, you have 50 people piled up there using third-party auto-it programs that are just right-clicking an area trying to loot something and then they go to work and they come home and they're like, did I loot it? Oh, I didn't. Let me just leave my car my computer on for another you know, seven days or however long it takes to get this item. I'm trying to get rid of situations like that um, without, you know, taking too much from the original quest. 
They're just trying to take away like the poop sock mentality that there is with some bottlenecks of the game. It is what it is. And, um, you know, I've dealt with this on many uh, EverQuest characters, and I think this is a fine change as well. Personally, again, let me know your thoughts, because I'm curious, you know, to uh, see the temperature of the room. I'm, I'm curious on what everybody else is thinking. Everybody's pretty hyped on this, and there was some good information that came out during this Q&A, and I'm really just interested in your opinions on all the different, uh, all the different, you know, changes or quality of life additions that are coming. It was also briefly mentioned about a King's Court. Now this is, what was it? Uh, this was a feature that came out in LDON, I believe, um, which is out of the range of Planes of Power. LDON came out after Planes of Power, but it is something that they're gonna be adding into the game as a way to kind of dump some platinum off of the server. It, it is a platinum sink, if you would, and uh, you'll be able to get different items. It'll work the same way as the original one where you get um, tickets, was it? I think it was tickets that you got. And then there's a rare chance to get a golden ticket. What this golden ticket's gonna do, now this isn't going to, this King's Court Casino, isn't gonna come out until Pop is completely finished. So the whole, whole entire server's done. Then this will come out around the time, I guess, LDON would have released. And then what will happen is if you do get this rare golden ticket, after you've dumped Plat, you know, over and over and over, the golden ticket has a chance of getting a random legacy item that you do not have on that character. You don't get to pick the legacy item. It's going to pick for you. It's going to be random. It's going to be something that you don't have. Um, and this is the only way to obtain legacy items at this point in the game. Because legacy items per expansion are only available for the first three months of that expansion. And then they're not available anymore. So by the end of the server, all legacy items are unobtainable except through this system. I think with the other tickets, like the non-golden tickets, I think you just get like stat food and gems and stuff like that. Um, I believe that's that was what it was. What will it be on this server? We'll have to find out. I'm not 100% sure. I don't believe that it was spoken to, but uh, that's what it was originally. Pets. Pets are going to take half of your XP if they do more damage than you, but this will be removed in the Looseland expansion once that launches. Uh, that will no longer be a thing. But originally, in the first three, or original plus two expansions, that will be the case. There's going to be no map in the game until Planes of Power is completed. Once the full server is through its lifespan, and it's in legacy mode, if you would, they will introduce the map, so then you will be able to use the map at that point. Um, there are third-party programs that allow you to have some sort of map, but if they detect that you are using this, or if you're streaming or putting out videos and they see that you're using this, they are going to take action to your account. They did mention um, names will be saved. So if you uh, played on the beta server and if your character was logged in for at least 60 minutes, um, which is something that I didn't do. I didn't log in for more than 60 minutes on any characters, but I did jump on and just kind of check it out, you know. Um, I've been playing some other games and stuff during this time. But if you did play a character and it was on for longer than 60 minutes, it's going to secure your name for you. They are going to wipe all of beta. Your character will be wiped to level one with nothing on it, but you will have that character with that name that you have saved. So uh, this was basically announced with about, I think the server had about five hours before it was being taken down. So if you watched this live and you heard this, there was a chance you could go make a character with a name you want and leave it on for an hour and then log out. Uh, but if you watch this after the fact, like I did, because I was at work, then, um, sorry. Uh, they did also mention that if you took the name of somebody in, a, in the community, like, uh, I don't know, Ion Blaze or something, right? If you took their name and they go to reserve their name and it's taken, then you, they, <laughs> these figures could make a petition in the Discord and say, hey, you know, like someone jacked my name, but you know. I put, a lot, I put out a lot of, you know, YouTube content or, or whatever, and uh, they'll actually get that name and give it to the content creator who has it. Uh, I think it's fine. Like, I'm not one to go jack, like, content creators' names or anything like that. That seems weird. Like, I understand freedom and all of that. 
um, and this is kind of taking away the freedom. But at the same time, you know, if you're if you're stealing Asmongold's name or something, I mean, you're just weird. Like, don't do that. It just seems it just seems weird. So I, I don't I don't really I don't really care that they're taking it away. Just like be creative, be yourself. I don't know. The uh, sc scroll reel. Uh, what the scroll wheel mouse view will be available. It is um, a little bit janky, if you would, uh, for lack of you know a better term. It's a little bit laggy, but they have um, they have figured out. Uh, there was a legacy of Acacia. I wish I could remember what it is right now. There was a legacy of Acacia bundle back in the day, much like titanium, platinum, the different bundles that you had. There was a legacy of Acacia one, and this client had the mouse scroll wheel. So I believe they're working now on reverse engineering this mouse scroll situation. And they are gonna update the client, um, be trying to do that before Kunark, they're trying to update the client. So we will have to download an additional client at some point between launch and Kunark. Um, but this new client is going to be able to add new features. And I don't believe you have to. You, you're gonna be able to use the old client if you'd like. But the new client is going to have uh, better technology if you would so that you can use um, some features that were built into that client that weren't in the original Mac client the original Mac client for the original Alcabor server you know it didn't have stuff like the mouse scroll and there was some other changes to that client that weren't in the other ones so once they get that the mouse scroll should feel a lot better uh, than what it's going to be on launch. It, it is going. It, it, it is going to work and everything, but you know, there's going to be a little uh, jankiness to it, just a little bit. You know, like a little, like some hiccups. Feels like maybe when you're moving the camera, maybe it might feel like a little bit of lag or whatever. Uh, it is definitely better than the alternative, which is not having it at all, for sure. Some quality of life things that were mentioned. Um, standing when casting. So. You won't have to type, you know, slash stand or hit hit the macro or the hotkey to stand before you cast. If you're sitting and metting and then you want to cast a heal or something, you should just be able to push the hotkey for the heal. Your character will automatically stand and start casting. This is a quality of life edition. Um, cool. Uh, that That's the one that was mentioned. One that I'm thinking of is what about like camping? I mean, it's simple, but I imagine they will add it in there. So when you typically when you slash camp, it says you must be sitting to make a camp. Um, so it would be cool if you could just type slash camp and not have to type slash sit slash camp. Um, so I'm I'm assuming that's something that they may add. I'm not really sure. Another thing that they're working on is Rangers auto attack. Uh, so what they're doing, and this is going to be exclusive to Rangers, not a warrior or anybody else using a bow. But uh, what they're working on is that. If a ranger is, say, say the ranger is the tank of your low-level group or something, the ranger's tanking, then the mob, you know, runs or something like this. Once they're out of range of the ranger's melee attacks, the ranger will pull out its bow and start auto-attacking with the bow. Again, this is going to be exclusive to rangers. Let me know how you guys feel on some of these changes because I'm curious on how you guys feel. They are going to add melody to bards. Um... You know, I don't remember Melody uh, being in Planes of Power. I really don't. It's not in my memory bank. But apparently it was in Planes of Power at some point. Uh, but Melody could only do a maximum of three songs, which I think in today's day and age on uh, Live EverQuest, you, or on TLPs or retail, whatever you have it, real live paid EverQuest, you can uh, melody as much as you want. They're, obviously, they're not the songs are going to run out before the next one if you have like six songs or something like that. But um, I believe there's no limit to it. I don't know. But in the original one, you could only do three, and then you would have to hit the button if you, uh, you know, if you missed a note or something like that. So it, it's going to be implemented in that way. Now, secrets opin opinion is that um, if you want to play bard at its fullest, you're not going to be using melody. Uh, you're going to you're going to be playing the bard and playing the game um, if you want to play it to its fullest and be the best bard you can be but melody will be there if you if you you know need to afk or if you <laughs> uh, anything like that you know what I mean so um, when is it going to be put into the game I believe it's being added around pop I believe so but I'm not 100% sure um, 
another thing is they are bard kiting is going to be in the game so they're not going to remove bard kiting um which is super cool because i'm big on bards I, like four years ago i got really bad videos of me doing bard kites i mean the quality is just terrible on those videos but doing some bard kiting on p99 blue that was a blast uh so bard kiting is going to be a thing um with that being said dots are not it's also said that dots are not going to be reduced damage on moving targets so if you dot um currently or on p99 how it is is if you're if your target's running um, or you're kiting your target with a snare or something like that the dots are doing reduced damage to the mob um, now if you fear the target they're doing full damage or if your target's standing still fighting your pet or fighting you they're doing full damage if, you're, if your target's rooted anything if it's just standing still or feared it's doing your dots are doing full damage but if it's running in fear you know for its life or if it's uh, running after you to try to catch up to you to fight you uh, your dots are doing reduced damage so that's not going to be a thing in this um, it was explained that it's that's just not a fun feature uh, that you know dots are just gonna do full damage all the time and uh, as a necromancer player sounds like a buff to me not that uh, necros really needed it but I don't think it's a huge deal to be honest I don't I mean, most of the time you're going to be fearing the target anyways, not just like running from it. I don't see why you wouldn't fear it, maybe. Especially if you snare it, which is also a dot. I don't know. Let me know. What do you guys think about that? Raids are going to be 72 people. Um, I know, I think on the original Alcabor, maybe they were reduced down to 50, maybe it was mentioned. Um, but we're keeping the classic 72 man raid. There's not, there's not going to be any kind of scaling. I think Larry asked if they would do raid scaling where if you only had 40 people you know maybe the uh life and damage is reduced where if you had full 72 people the life and damage are max or what have you it's not gonna be nothing like that it's like some feature wow uses in their live client maybe everquest does too i don't know anything about uh retail everquest i have no idea i haven't played it you know since back in the day uh retail i mean i've played tlps and what have you they're gonna they're going to upgrade the server before the launch. So currently on the beta, they were using a server, but uh, I guess it was having a little bit of issues, but they're actually getting a much nicer, way more powerful server that, it, that they're transferring everything over to now, and that's going to be ready for launch. Um, the server was, is, I think, I, I believe they mentioned it was donated uh, anonymously. Well, they know who it was, but they're to remain anonymous to the public. Um, so whoever you are, thanks. It's going to help um, a lot of people and the stability of the server. That's actually super, super huge for a project like this. That's like non-profit. Uh, it's massive for the for the project. PB AOE limit is going to be 80 mobs max um, all the time in the Discord. We went over this in, in a previous video, but um, day one, they're going to have some limits. I mean, week one. They're going to have some limits, like in the newbie zones, you can only pull four mobs at a time. And this is just, you know, for the launch, for everybody to get going. And they're going to change some of the spawn timers and all that kind of stuff. And there are certain zones that are known for power leveling, where if you pull above a certain limit... Now, these these zones, everybody knows by the time uh, Looseland's out, there's a lot of zones in different spots. And not even just Looseland, there's, there's plenty of other zones. But these hot spot zones, everybody knows them. Uh, they're being targeted specifically with limits of how many mobs you can pull to fight the fight against power leveling. Um, just so that this is the classic experience, you know, to keep it kind of, you know, power leveling, whatever. We don't got to get into it. It's just to reduce power leveling, right? I think most people on P99 aren't really loving power leveling or trying to get involved in power leveling. You're just trying to have the spiritual journey, if you would. Um, so, you know, just to fight that, but in general, 80 is going to be the limit for all zones. Specific zones will be less than that, but 80 is the overall limit. If you go to above the limit in any zone, the mobs will teleport on top of you. So, you you know, you go around and you're trying to pull them, 
and you're trying to collect a lot, if you go over the limit, they're gonna teleport on top of you, they're gonna stun you, and they're gonna kill you. So that's the fight against it. Um, again, some of the hot zones for power leveling are gonna have lesser limits, but uh, this is to keep to keep the server just trying to be the, the good old fashioned grouping and leveling that we all know and love. Is that right? Um, that was, there's going to be, there's a couple more things. There's going to be uh, Lucelin graphics available at launch. So if that's your thing, you can turn them on, you can turn them off. It's up to you. You can keep them off the whole time. You can turn them on the whole time. When you want to turn them on or off, that is completely up to you. It's all client side anyways. If somebody else has their graphics on, but you have your graphics off, you're just going to see them with their graphics off anyways. It's all client side. So it is up to you to turn them on or off whenever you do, please. Um, there are going to be some titles they mentioned. Uh, so, you know, if you're like the first level 50 hardcore druid, never died, it's going to announce it to the server. You know, so-and-so level 50 druid made it to level 50 on hardcore without dying, so on and so forth. They're going to give you a title that you can add to your character. I wonder if that title persists through death. Like if your character dies... Does he retain the title even though you're set back to zero or uh, can you use that? Well, probably not use that title on other characters. That wouldn't make sense. I wonder if it persists through death because you did the achievement. I mean, hey, you might level that character up again if you liked it a lot even though you lost everything. I don't know. We, we play EverQuest, right? We're EverQuest players, so we are a glutton for punishment in some aspect at least. But I think that wraps it up. So hopefully this wasn't too long. I'm sure I went over 20 minutes, but hopefully not too far. Um, you know, just another thanks to Level Up Larry and the Secrets for doing this and getting some questions from the community. Larry had some questions of his of his own. And, you know, uh, PQ hype, PQ hype. We got less than a week until the server launches. Um, but once again, links down in the description. Go check out Level Up Larry's video on his YouTube page. Make sure to comment over there. You know, give a shout out to Secrets. Tell Larry thanks and all of that. And the anonymous donator for the server. Make sure to go over there, like, subscribe to Larry, do all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see you on October 1st.